nerds, nerdheads, I do live. Specifically after my phone dying, and the car dying, and the car dying again, and trying to survive the holidays while all this is happening, you get kind of... Ah! <laughs> anyway, uh, today, uh, today on our way back, we are actually looking at another Cybertron mold. This one is actually a somewhat of a request, which is actually a first for me doing. Uh, but, hey... I know you're probably watching, I cannot remember the name off the top of my head as we're recording this, but thank you for the request, and I'm actually going to do the other ones that you requested as well. Uh, but today we are looking at Transformers Movie 1 Dive Bomb, who is a repaint of Transformers Cybertron Thundercracker. And like I said before, and I will say it again, I do really dig that they repainted all these previous Transformers. I know some people were really looking at them at the time, and, and just saying that they are an excuse to fill out the line. But I reiterate, I reiterate another... I reiterate what another reviewer said, that sometimes a repaint can be something where a, where another person has, has a chance to get a hold of these molds if they miss their chance, or maybe the mold is more appealing. The yellow is not that appealing. <laughs> granted, this the, granted this yellow has is actually used around two or three more times throughout this whole entire toy line of the first movie. And I'm I'm okay on it. It's not a it's it's not a really bright yellow, but it's not bone bee yellow. It's enough yellow to stand out on its own. Now of course it is a jet. Now on the one that I got, first off I do dig that he has a little landing gear. And let's go ahead and fix this tripod because thanks to him being a jet, he does get kinda big kinda fast. Now, at least on the one that I got, he really doesn't like to close up all the way for some odd reason. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you can hear it. It popped out of its socket right there. Mm. And this and this is kind of loose, but it's only loose if you tap it. And I do dig that you do see kind of you do see a little bit of robot kibble, but not as much. I mean, it's a lot more believable as undercarriage than it is Warbot Kibble. You know, look at Star Starscream in the next movie. And, of course, being as a Cybertron toy, he does... Where's it at? There it is. Come with a Cyber Key. Now, this was the generic Decepticon Cyber Keys they used. Which means he was not part of Sector 7. Um, and actually, in the comic books, he very briefly pops up in the Reign of Scar Starscream and was technically in the Defiance comic for number two, uh, because he was in that in that group that sided with Megatron. So technically he's in two comic books, but technically he only shows up in one. I <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's a brief comic uh, bio on him, and he doesn't pop up in the novels. I'm actually catching up on the novels right now too. Um, a lot of to a lot of toys exclusives do pop up in the novels too. But anywho, let's check out his cyber key gimmick. And all you have to do is just put this in here and boop. Little a little cannon pops up. And this cannon does fire. All you gotta do is just squeeze these and boop. It does come it does come out into this nice sky bluish translucent missile. Now thankfully this one it really hasn't seen hasn't really seen much stress. Because we again we are hitting on the ten year mark, so some of the translucent stuff does get kind of weary. I was just glad when I was just glad when I got it hit. It came with a missile. He said, "Oh yeah, it came with a missile. This wasn't shown." Most of the time when they say that, it's like uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Anywho, transformation is very simple and easy. All you gotta do is just this is going to end up becoming an arm and pop the legs out. Pull these to the side. Pull this down, and time it well enough because you have to move the nose come like so. You can already see his head, and we are going to raise up again. Ooh, there we go. And you can already see his noggin in there. So we will go ahead and move that to the side, and this will come up. Flip it all over. Well, this is awkward. I ran out of space, so I had to go back and clear some out. Um, but all you really have to do pa past that is just, when you open up his legs, 
the thrusters right there. You twist them around, deploy the feet, close it back up, and you reveal the fist out of this little hole right, out of this little compartment right here. Now, first things first, out of everything, nothing pegs together at all. Um, the body doesn't ba doesn't peg into the backpack, and neither do the arms peg into both sides. Oh, there you go. It's supposed to be like this. And I, when he's standing, Nate, and, but everything fits tightly enough, and there's enough friction in the joints for him not to be a floppy mess, thanks to everything not pegging around. But then there's certain things that when you start messing with them, the pe the non-pegging issue does become an issue. The best example is is when you actually mess with his arm right here, where at least on mine, again, this is kind of loose. So whenever I mess with this giant heavy arm, the actual full-on joint starts moving with it. And this has to be kind of tight to actually hold this up. Like, I can sit here and pose. I can sit here and pose him with it out. And that arm's not moving at all. Which, I give that some superior credit. Oh, and a nice, I do like the nice little homage to the original G1 stuff by having these little these things here. But I can tell you what I do like. He reminds me of the G2 aerial bots. And I grew up on those, so this is a definite another plus for him on this, for at least design-wise. And that head, oh man, I'm just loving this head. And I th do believe a lot of more Cybertron actually have these types of heads. I know Megatron has this type of head. And I, I don't know, maybe it's just the aesthetic. I am just absolutely uh, have a weakness for it. Uh, kind of a clear blue screen window right here. But um, he actually is pretty good. Double uh, Now let's look at his posability. Uh, complete 360 on the arms on both sets of arms. Uh, bicep swivel on both of them. This one does have an over 90 degree, uh, bend at, uh, a less than 90 degree bend on the, at the elbow. And it is tight. And this one is actually double jointed, so he actually can hold this thing pretty far up there. And on the hips, we do have a swivel, ball joint at the hip, and a 90 degree bend at the knee. Kind of standard posability for a figure like him, but... The thing, the thing that really shines about him is the tightness of everything. Even though this toy is ten, is ten years old, the tightness is still fresh out of the box. Mostly, mostly due to the actual giant cannon railgun arm that he has. Now, displaying him on the shelf that might be problematic, but then again, you can have him just holding his arm up like that. Boom. And one of my final thoughts. If it wasn't for everything not really pegging together, that's the only thing to turn to me away from this thing. But other than that, I do dig the head. The, col the colors do kind of nice because working on a military base now, you do actually see some vehicles wear this kind of wear this kind of color scheme, mostly as a alert vehicles or some kind of vehicles that need to be seen, not on a jet plane. But then again, this is a toy, and him popping up in the comic books was mostly just a um. Uh oh, get off there. As a uh, as a I'm a here thing, eh, that's the, a lot of the characters. But do, but the but the final recommendation is: Do I recommend that you pick this up? Actually, yes. <laughs> With me gro having a growing weakness for the Cybertron aesthetic and design, I can't help but like it. And I do recommend that you do pick him up. He is actually going for pretty cheap. Most pla uh, most places, and especially eBay, are selling him for like a complete one with the cyber key and 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 missile, is like ten to ten to twelve bucks, depending on where you go with free shipping. Um, but yeah, I say pick him up. And with that being said, guys, thank you for watching my very first request and ever, I believe. And I'll catch you guys next week where I have more stuff coming along. So. I'm gone. I'm Gust. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys next week.